Hi, I'm Mike I'm with Utastic. I'm standing here at Windy City Rails with Adam Grandy, who does the. Um, I did say that right. Thank you, <laughs> uh, Adam Grandy, who does the uh, audio video at Windy City Rails, and you've been doing it for a couple years. Mm -hmm. And uh, can, you, can you just say a little bit about like how long you've been doing the video, and and how has how is making sure that uh, you know you get good quality video over the last few years. Mm -hmm. I mean, has that been something that's changed a lot since sure. you yeah. first got involved? Yeah, I've been with Chicago Ruby and Windy City Rails mm -hmm. uh, for about three years, since 2009, and uh, it has been evolution. Uh, it's something yeah. that uh, I've been excited about. Um, I'm real passionate about live production, so it's, mm -hmm. it's a great opportunity to get involved. Um, we've evolved the quality um, of the production throughout the years, mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of that just comes from things that we've learned year over year from conference to conference. Um, certainly the more you um, do something, the better um, you get at it if you're kind of looking for ways to improve upon it, right. and that's that's really the philosophy that we have here. Right. Um, from, from me and from the organizer, Ray, uh, it's, again, kind of the thing that we espouse and what we, we'd like to do. Now, if somebody is looking to do, like, recording of their own user group, um, uh, you know, I, I've, I've had a great success with just having a MacBook and, mm -hmm. and a photo booth, um, but somebody wants to do, do you have any suggestions for, like, a simple way to, to get nice, sure. good, clean audio? Sure. Or? Sure. Yeah, uh, it, audio is a couple things. Number one, it's going to depend on the, the mic that you use, mm -hmm. uh, your miking technique, um, and then, uh, you know, your recording and whatnot. Right. <clears throat> so for uh, Chicago Ruby and Windy City Rails, um, we're using a Countryman E6. Okay. It's about a $300 microphone. Um, it's, it's widely used in live production, um, concerts, churches, yeah. uh, all kinds of things, because it's a great price point, delivers fantastic audio, um, and kind of getting back to some of the things that influence mm -hmm. the quality of the audio, your miking is important. So, um, you know, for speaking, uh, your options are either a, a stationary microphone, uh, a handheld microphone, yeah, exactly, um, a lavalier microphone, mm -hmm. or uh, what I'll call an ear microphone. So the Countryman is an ear microphone, um, which means it's proximity miking. Uh, okay. So it, the, the mic element is uh, just right... Uh, by the mouth. By the mouth and yeah. whatnot. So with the E6, you start off with a phenomenal sound. Mm -hmm. um, and then once you kind of um, send that sound to the recording, um, again, every, you know. It comes very crisp and clear. Yeah, you know. And, well, you asked earlier about kind of what influences that, that mm -hmm. audio. Well, we use, um, you know, a wireless channel. Uh, mm -hmm. So we're using Sure equipment and whatnot. Um, so that's for our signal flow is, is pretty good. Mm -hmm. So that's that's how we handle that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I, has there been anything that's been like a, a real big surprise with like uh, that you might think would be a common, was there something maybe you had a common assumption about, mm -hmm. oh, we're going to, we have to have this kind of audio for mm -hmm. that you've learned didn't work quite the way you thought it would? Or, mm -hmm. or, uh, yeah, you know, um, assumptions are common and they can actually, uh, you know, you think one thing and another thing happens. I think, especially when you talk live production, a lot of things can happen. Um, and that's where doing things regularly and kind of knowing mm -hmm. what you're doing really helps. Um, I don't know that I could put my finger on any real one assumption that's been hard for us. Okay. Um, I think <clears throat> as, it, as, it, as it relates to user groups, what yeah. we found is, um, you know, if you're recording the user group audio or video with the intent of distributing it for people to view mm -hmm. or listen to, um, Usually, you're, you know, for user groups, you're working with volunteers or, right. or whatnot like that. So what we try and do is we try and do our production as close to the actual user group as possible. So when we record a video, we want to edit it and upload it that day. Yes. Um, because that decreases the time when, when, when people become less motivated and like, oh, well, we'll just do it next time we meet and things like that. Yes. So, so an assumption for us has been, that, you know, the, the, the quicker we can get to uh, distribution, the, the better it's going to be for everyone. Yeah, it's it's the swallow the frog kind yeah. of thing. It's, yeah, it's, exactly. It's gonna it's gonna be time consuming. It's gonna be a little painful, but and especially if you get a rhythm down to it, you right? Know, yeah. That's that's probably the biggest thing is is that it's a very um, machine. Yeah, you know, it's very exactly. uh, uh, mechanical. Yep. That's what I'm trying to yep. say. Uh, now, the other thing is is that you you you're not a developer, but you watch these conferences and you've been doing it for years, and you watch all the speakers get up and they have their their talks. What what kind of evolution have you seen? Is it like they just are kind of the same thing every year? Or have you noticed that, oh, the style of a presentation is drifting or something that, mm. that maybe those of us in the audience who are there as developers mm. 
are just listening to the content, maybe not listening to the con how how it's mm -hmm. it's framed. Yeah, uh, you know, I don't know uh, programmatically if um, you know presenters are presenting differently than they have three years ago. Yeah. Um, I, I would say. Um, there's a couple of changes year over year. Uh, mm -hmm. For us, the, the most basic is the conference has grown, right. uh, so there's now more people, um, which is mean means that we now can have more presenters. Um, that also means that we can also have different types of presenters. Mm -hmm. So uh, you, you're right. I'm not a developer. I don't really get too much into the day-to-day, -day, um, you know, uh, coding and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, I, but I would say um, beyond kind of very technical things like, you know, our spec and whatnot, right. we're also getting into kind of more of the management tasks. Um, how do you work with, you know, your staff of developers? Mm -hmm. um, what are the, you know, ways to improve upon uh, that and working as a team and whatnot? So there's programmatically, there's been some, some new talks that have really, I think, been food for developers and managers mm -hmm. that can really improve their practice beyond their technical skills. Now, I, I and it, just one last question mm -hmm. is dealing with uh, pacers. Okay. Yeah, uh, is that ever been something? There's a few uh, people that are well known in the community that sure. like to move that stage. Sure. Is that something that's been you know a challenge? I just when I ask it because it's something I I've, I've felt bad for uh, yeah. the photographer for a camera something. operator. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's not. I, I don't think it's too much of a challenge for yeah. me. I've my background is in live video production, mm -hmm. so um, I've got a lot of experience with camera work and whatnot. Uh, I'm sure that it can be a challenge for someone who's maybe new or doesn't do that regularly. Yeah. Um, you know, it just comes down to making sure you've got the right gear. A fluid head tripod helps you out. Um, mm -hmm. Making sure that you kind of understand your framing, uh, your composition, when a person's walking across the stage and you're shooting them um, live with a camera, making sure you give them lead room and whatnot. Um, and then it just comes down to practice, yeah. you know, having done it before, you know, having maybe been coached by someone, those are opportunities that will kind of improve your skill. Do you ever talk with the, the speakers and say, oh, hey, this is kind of, this is, please kind of stay within this yeah. area so we can get a nice clean. I have. Yeah. I don't do that too much anymore just because, um, you know, typically they aren't following it or it will only marginally improve the quality of the video. Typically, um, the value we're going to get out of that is much less than the value we'd be getting out of solving other problems like lighting okay. um, or, you know, for this conference we're using a, a front projection um, set up and mm -hmm. so people are walking through the projection, you know. So solving that problem for the future, getting a rear projection screen mm -hmm. and whatnot would, would be an improvement over what we've got now. So, okay. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for yeah, taking the time. Yeah, definitely. To speak. Glad to And thank glad you to for help. doing the video. Absolutely.